In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside, and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. In today's video, I'll be recovering any precious metals that have been absorbed by my filter papers. These filters contain chip ash from previous gold recoveries. They also contain some foils from a broken beaker of pins and bits that have been swept from my workbenches when I've been disassembling e-waste boards. The first thing I need to do is incinerate all the filters and their contents. They will be burned until no smoke is produced. I did this off camera, and here's the results. So the next thing I need to do is to pass the material through a kitchen strainer. Anything that doesn't fit will be crushed with a pestle and mortar. The material needs to be crushed and separated to allow the acid to effectively contact any precious metals. This will help to speed up the dissolution of the metal. Here's all of the material that wouldn't crush. I'll process this material at a later date. There's a couple of broken crucibles in there and bits of broken glass, and it needs to be crushed a little more. Time to get it in some beakers and see what I can recover from it. I had to divide the material into three separate beakers, just in case the reaction takes off violently. It's best to make sure there is room for it to expand, and hopefully it won't boil over. I'm going to add some nitric acid to each of the beakers. Nitric acid will dissolve base metals such as copper and iron, and it will also dissolve, hopefully, silver and palladium. I'm adding around 30 milliliters of homemade nitric acid to each of the beakers and putting them on some heat. I'll make a video next week of how I made the nitric, and I'll come back and leave a link in the description if you're interested in watching that. After applying a little heat, the reaction gets underway. Nitrogen dioxide gas is being produced, meaning something is being dissolved. I'll keep adding acid until there is no more reaction and move to filtering. Filtering this material is proving to be quite tricky. Some of the material flows straight through the filter. The material that doesn't go through clogs the filter. While it's filtering, I'm going to test some of the filtrate to see if there's any precious metals in solution. The first metal I'll test for will be silver. I'm pouring a splash of hydrochloric acid into the solution. Any silver in the solution will precipitate as silver chloride. Surprisingly, there's no silver, not even a trace. The next metal I'll test for will be palladium. I'm using stannous chloride for this test. With this reaction, it would suggest that there is a small amount of palladium in the solution. I'll continue filtering and later, I'll put some dimethyl glyoxime into the solution and see what precipitates. After 24 hours of filtering, some of the micro-fine powder still made it through. I'm going to have to filter it again, but in the meantime, I'm going to get on chasing the gold. So, here's some material that wouldn't go through the filters. This is the first of the jugs that I managed to get rinsed through. And this is the brown powder I managed to finally filter off of the solution. To each of these, I'm adding some hydrochloric acid that I recovered from some copper chloride in my last video. I'll also leave a link in the description for that video too. I'll add a couple of milliliters of nitric acid to each, and one by one, I'll pop them on some heat and let them react until there's no more reaction. Then I'll add another milliliter of nitric to see if it reacts. I'll do one milliliter additions until there's no reaction. After a couple of minutes being on the heat, this jug really took off. Having the material finely divided allows the acid to dissolve a lot of material at the same time. The downside to this is that the reaction can take off violently and boil out of the jug. I'll work through these one by one and I'll get back to you when they're done.
This time, I've opted for vacuum filtration. Hopefully, this will speed up the process. I'm decanting the liquid off the top first. After this, I'll suction it through the filter, and then one by one, I'll scrape the rest of the material into the filter to rinse out any gold-bearing solution. I'm not using any fancy vacuum pump for this. I find that a hand pump from an automotive brake bleeding kit works just fine. They're also very cheap and easily replaceable should it break. The vacuum is working great. 15 minutes in, and I've already got through the first jug. This is what the clean material looks like. All the gold is gone, and all that's left is grey ash. I'll continue this off camera, and I'll be back with you shortly for the precipitation. Due to terrible weather outside, I'll be precipitating the gold indoors. So for the precipitation, I'll be using ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate doesn't give off the same strong smell as sodium metabisulfite. There's a lot of contamination in these solutions, so I'm expecting a very dirty gold drop. It will also be a very fine powder when it drops. It's going to take a bit of cleaning once it's recovered. In the other solution, I'm going to stir in some dimethyl glyoxime. If there's any palladium present, it will precipitate out as a dimethyl glyoxime palladium complex. I've already raised the pH to around 5 with sodium bicarbonate. And I've dissolved a couple of grams of the dimethyl glyoxime in some distilled water. It doesn't look as if a lot happened. I'll leave all three solutions to settle overnight, and I'll check on them in the morning. After decanting both of the solutions, there looks to be a fairly decent amount of gold. I'll add the two together, and I'll get them cleaned up, ready to weigh. I'll wash the gold a few times with boiling water, then I'll boil the gold in some hydrochloric acid. This will remove any impurities. Finally, I'll wash the gold with hot distilled water a few times and dry it off. Some palladium did precipitate out overnight. There looks to be a large amount too. Unfortunately, looks can be deceiving. It's just an ultra-fine layer that hasn't properly settled. When you look inside the jug, it's barely visible. I'll put this filter paper to one side, and the next time I deal with some palladium, I'll process it then. Before I weigh out the gold, I wanted to show you the material for my next series of videos. In this series, I'll be trying to process everything in the cheapest ways possible. I'll be showing the cost of all the reagents I use and how much gold I recover throughout the series to show the cost versus the recovery. There's exactly 20 kilograms of boards here. I'll be doing videos on the fingers, the chips, the pins and MLCCs, I believe there's also some switches in there with a little silver on them. So if you would like to be informed of when these videos come out, hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get a notification. As for this recovery, I have recovered 2.2 grams of gold that would have been thrown away if I hadn't saved those filters. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.